Hey everyone, we are live, finally doing a talk that I know many of you have been waiting for. So I'm excited to dive in and get you guys the information you've been asking for. So we're talking about crystals and essential oils. There's been hundreds of questions that you guys have sent me. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to cover as many as possible, but I'm going to organize the thoughts. So hopefully this is going to be helpful to you guys and it will be something that um, will I don't know, maybe dispel some of the rumors. I think that that's, that's where it gets a little bit um, tricky is when we I don't know, get into some of the unknowns. So I don't know about you, but unknowns <laughs> are um, interesting to me because I wanna know, right? I wanna know. So I'm gonna make myself a red drink right now. Um, I've already put the sulfur lime in the water, so it's a little bit murky there, and I put some lime in there. And I'm grabbing a packet because, you know, lazy here. Um, and you might remember when the red drink was introduced to me, meaning you all knew about the red drink. And when the red drink was introduced to me, you, um, I kind of fought it a little. Do you guys remember that? I was sort of like, that's a lot of lime. You're drinking six drops of lime a day because, you know, some of you were drinking two a day and you were having, you know, three drops of lime in each one. And I got a little bit, um, I don't understand this. Why are you guys doing this? Um, you shouldn't do it every day. I mean, do you remember some of the comments that I made? So I'm, you know, interested in, in researching. So as I, as I went forward, you know, I found like, wow. And I talked to Dr. Minky and I was like, why did you come up with this? And what does it do? And I researched it further. So one of the things about crystals, so here's my red drink. Let's take a sip. One of the things about crystals is that it's steeped in mystery. There's an esoteric um, component to it that tends to freak some people out. So <laughs> let's start by thinking back to all things that were new. Do you, this is so interesting to me when I start thinking about inventions and whatnot. So again, if you're just joining us, this is our talk on crystals and essential oils. And we're gonna dispel some of the rumors. Um, I'm gonna be real clear on my thoughts about it. And, and some of you who are already very, very into crystals will definitely disagree with some of the things I'm going to say. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that out there just to begin with. But I'm gonna help you understand why I disagree with some of the common teachings. But I'm gonna also share with you what I do agree with and the value of crystals, okay? And then right after this video, we're gonna be doing a crossover event in my um, Roots and Fruits group. So if you're not in there, it's for faith-based people only. And this is where it gets tricky. Some of you guys answer the questions and you're like, I'm not into Christianity, I'm into witchcraft. Thank you for being honest, but that's not the group for you. So I, I know that that's where this becomes really interesting is that crystals cross over into, or mostly into divination and witchcraft and new age philosophy. And some of you are like, what's wrong with that? And um, again, this is where we will disagree on some stuff, but I want you guys to know First and foremost, my goal and allegiance in life is to Jesus, okay? So I'm just being clear on that, and many of you guys know that about me. And those of you guys who disagree with, I don't know, Christianity, um, have learned that, you know, I don't, I don't get in your face about it all the time. Occasionally we have something where I will talk about it because it's, it kind of intertwines. Um, and you're your own person. I still love you, okay? Somebody says they're into witchcraft, you don't get kicked out of my groups. You just wouldn't really wanna be in a faith-based group, okay? So um, so Roots and Fruits, if you wanna join that, do, because I'm gonna be doing a whole other series, um, a Christian-based series on that group. So that is facebook.com forward slash groups and then forward slash Roots 
fruits. So just look up roots and fruits. Um, make sure you answer the questions though. My admin team and I, we don't let people in unless you actually answer the questions. So um, we'd love to have you in there. Even if you're faith curious, just answer the questions like I'm curious and you'll get let in, okay? Okay, so, so my friends, this is such a fascinating topic to me. And I hope it is to you as well, because with everything that's been going on in the world lately, it's so fascinating to me that a lot of people are into crystals. A lot of people obviously are jumping into oils. How many of you are brand new to this group because you were curious about crystals or because you were curious about oils, right? Uh, so I encourage you, if you are new to this group and you didn't, you found it on your own, you found it through me or found it on your own, like nobody introduced this group to you, you can message me and I will actually get back to you. So just know that, like if you are brand new and have no one to help you on this journey, you can contact me directly. And yes, I will respond. A lot of people are freaked out by that, but yes, I'm the one that actually has conversations with um, people who need help that don't have a person. So if you have a person, if somebody has introduced you to this group, they're, they're your person. So I don't step on anybody's toes that way. Okay. That being said, I'm going to hopefully enlighten you on this topic. So if we think just about modern technology and we think this is, this is, again, where it gets interesting to me. And I, I told you, forks used to be considered of the devil. Um, at one time, people thought that telephones were straight from Satan. Like, I, I kid you not, like they would, the farmers would go and like cut down the telephone lines because they were like, we don't want that over our farm, you know? Um, electricity, if you had electricity in your home, it was like really bad. <laughs> like you were letting the devil in your house. Okay, the, the other thing that I, I think is interesting too is if you just consider taking someone, say, from the 1800s and showing them a television, they would, like, faint, right? Like, what kind of witchcraft is that? Like, it's interesting to me that anything that we don't understand, we usually just say, mm, taboo. Okay, so to be fair, crystals have a long history of mysticism, esotericism. So what, is, what does it mean when somebody is esoteric? If you watch the Chosen series, there was a, a, a conversation between um, two people, Matthew and the new guy that just got introduced, you know, I think his name's Philip. Um, super funny because they used the term esoteric in a wrong way. And I thought, oh, that's not the way you use that word, but okay. Esoteric doesn't just mean like things you can't understand. They mean secret things. They, and I guess from a biblical standpoint, when Jesus spoke in, in you know, riddles to some degree and he spoke in parables, there was um, a lot of um, hiddenness, right? You, you either understood it or you didn't. And it was, it was hidden to those that wouldn't be understanding of it. Okay, so specific esoteric philosophy, though, would state that they're secret to just a few and only a few will really understand it. So it's kind of the secret club. So when we get into understanding crystals, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like, I don't really know where to begin. I don't know, like if I, if I, if I pick this up and this is a worry stone. So I'm gonna kind of introduce a few random things to you guys. This is a, a rose quartz worry stone. And the way to tell a fake on quartz is, there needs to be like color variations and you should be able to sort of see through it. Like I can see through this in the light. Uh, fakes that are dyed, quartz, usually, it's like beautiful and they're one color. So that's that's one. I have a bunch of different tips for you guys on how to spot a fake. Um, but when I look at these and just even even all of these, and I don't know how many of you guys, I'm, I'm gonna guess some of these, like maybe this one is, is fake. But, um, you know, a lot of these, they're just beautiful, real bracelets I've picked up over the years. Clearly, I like green. And, uh, you know, I like them because they were pretty. Right? You, you know, I bought this. This is a Solomon Agate because it's pretty. Like, see if that'll focus. It's so pretty. Like, whatever. You know? Like, it's so pretty. So when I think about 
this in my home, there's a couple things. And when we get into the roots and fruits class, that's going to be something where I'm going to touch on some of the, man, how, how are we going to get through this without, um, as a Christian, right? So we're not going to get too into the religious aspect of it in this one, because I want to really dive into just what they are and how they work and the science behind it. So if we take a look at the modern use of crystals, and that's to me what I first started researching. I wanted to know, is there any scientific proof that something like this, this is clear crystal quartz, can this, is this something that is can, can you prove to me that this works in a specific way? And what was so fun to me was to see that, like, yeah, our cell phones have crystals in them. Did you know that? Your computer has crystals in it. There's liquid crystal displays. Your TV has crystals. Your any electronics, transistors, radios, ultrasound, sonar, um, you know, the space station, like <laughs> everything that's electronic uses crystals for storing content information, um, for transmitting things uh, specifically, and this is the one that you probably all know, is watch, a watch or a clock. You'll see it says quartz. Well, why is it always like prominent? Why is it that they wanna make sure you know it's quartz run? Well, because a crystal quartz, what they've done, it's so interesting. They've, they've fashioned, quartz into this tiny little tuning fork inside your watch that when paired with a small amount of electricity, the quartz itself oscillates, right? It creates this, um, there's an oscillator that it creates this vibration and it is a exceptionally precise frequency that it will oscillate at, right? This oscillator will create this vibration and it will vibrate at 32 point seven six eight right thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty eight times per second or thirty eight point seven thirty two point seven six eight um hertz right there's megahertz and then you put the point and it becomes hertz i forget which one it is but just know that it's fast but that frequency allows crystal quartz crystal specific true authentic quartz crystal they can't use plastic it has to be quartz, they can't use glass. It's quartz crystal is mathematically tuned perfectly for a one second interval to create a clock <laughs> that is precise. So that's why sometimes you see clocks say quartz, which means the timepiece is very accurate. So that was cool to me to learn. I, I think it's cool to anybody to learn, right? That, but when I think about other things, I don't see any evidence for um, precision in frequency, although there's evidence in radio frequency, radio waves, for them using different stones for different wavelength, right? So that's where it gets really interesting because they do use different stones for different things. It's just not listed in the general population. Okay, so if I want, if I want to share with you very clearly how crystals work, this is where there's a division of understanding. So I've read a lot of Gary's teachings. I've been to a lot of his teachings on frequency. We're not going to get into frequency too much today. I've studied modern understanding of crystals and I've studied like original understanding of crystals. Okay. I don't know everything clearly, but, um, a lot of crystal, um, if you can call them practitioners, right? People who practice using crystals in their daily healing, right? This is, this is where it gets kind of interesting. We'll, um, we'll get into saying that this little thing on its own has a frequency. Okay. And this is where some of you will disagree with me on this, but I am in the process of, of clinically studying this and understanding this. Now, when I've taught you all about crystals before, which has been very slim, I've taught you that um, if, if this little guy is sitting over here in the room and there's nobody in it, it's really not doing anything. Okay. It, it just isn't. The crystal's power comes from adding some form of energy source to it. And what this does, and any of you have gone, who have gone through study 
I encourage you to go back to your instructors and go back to your books and you will realize that there was a misinterpretation of information here that this little beautiful guy focuses energy. It doesn't create energy on its own. It can't. It's not alive. Okay, so just to be clear, crystals work on humans through living energy. And what that means is that they don't work on their own unless actual life is present, namely human life or animal life, right? So some people call the human energy system chakras, aura, frequency, meridians, right? Neurons. There's all sorts of things that we talk about, just our, our own human energy. We're going to get into more chakra, more on chakras in a different video because, I mean, we could have this be hours long lecture and I know you guys don't have time for that. So, but what crystals do is they help direct and redirect specific energies. So when you go to, say, a Reiki practitioner who, who actually uses crystals in, or, or stones, right? And so we're not going to get into what these are because I think, you know, they're minerals, basically. There's ones that look like crystals or crystalline. There's ones that are like stone. This is a jade. So, you know, just different minerals of the earth. When we get into understanding um, how this kind of energy works and we know that our body and this is again where it gets a little bit interesting because this is stuff that we don't have a whole lot of science on but there's evidence for it so for instance meridians or if you go in for acupuncture or even acupressure like it's so fascinating like they put a needle point on this part of my body and the other a totally different part of my body can feel it that's because everything in your body is interconnected and somebody's mapped that out, right? So it's like, what in the world? So we know this exists. It, it's just a matter of, it's like electricity. And I've used that analogy to explain to you essential oils. Like, just because you don't understand how they work doesn't mean they don't work. Like, I don't technically understand exactly how electricity works. I just know not to take a fork and stick it in the socket. Now, that would have the people of the, I don't know, ages past freak out right you've got this fork from the devil that you've put into this wall socket that looks like a little face and there's electricity like what kind of satanic house do you have you know so it's again the unknown is a very scary thing so if we understand though the beauty behind these focusing energy so in my studies and learning about this there's this process of quickening things up. Now, how many of you guys know that when it comes to our essential oil use? Essential oils don't cure you, but they will speed things up, right? If you get a cold and you're already sick, mm, like, sorry, thieves isn't going to cure you, but it will speed up the process because, and, and that's what crystals do. They speed up the process. <laughs> so if you're going through an emotional issue, Again, this can help focus the energy that, again, is, is something that's wild about our emotions, right? That emotions have in energy, and it can help speed up the healing process. They don't in and of themselves heal you. They help speed up your own energy to heal you. So here's, here's kind of where, where, again, I'm going to just be as clear as I possibly can. Crystals or stones cannot produce in your body something that is not already there. What they do is they speed up your body's natural process. All right? So they're going to help channel your own body's energy to get you through something faster. So it's a really, really interesting thing to consider. Okay, there's some other cool stuff too that happens when you simply take some time to hang out and focus on something positive right? That's biblical for sure. And, you know, I, and there's a fine line and a slippery slope that we'll get into in the roots and fruits discussion. Okay. So, and again, the roots and fruits discussion is a different group. That's a crossover event that will be for the Christian discussion part. Okay. Now there's a placebo effect in place as well. And I want you to clear your mind of the negative thoughts around placebo effect. What I like to call it is a good placebo effect. It's a good thing. And Gary Young understood that when he named these oils. 
And I get so many of you asking, why is there an oil named forgiveness or hope? Like, what? Okay, that's a mindfulness thing. And yes, the oils work, but sometimes we need to align our minds because our minds can block, our bodies can block. We can physically block something from working because we are not wanting it to work. So when we take something and say, oh, I heard that rose quartz helps with emotional healing and relationship healing. I've heard that, right? There's So you take this stone and whether or not this stone does that or not, there's a massive connection of your mind holding on to this stone and now your mindfulness about it. So for me, that's prayerfulness about it, right? I'm praying. Just, you know, looking at God's creation, looking at the beauty of this stone, knowing that this actually scientifically will magnify energy and any energy I'm putting into it, it just focuses that. That's a good scientific fact that it's great. It's good. So the interesting thing is, and this is where it gets very interesting, it can matter what stone I pick, but it might not. These stones will work for bad or for good. They don't care. It's what you thought process, mindfulness of them. They will focus the energy. Now, some are naturally good at just negative stuff, right? I have a lodestone here, which is a fun stone that just takes away some of the electromagnetic frequency in my room. Um, but there's something to be said about a good placebo effect. Now, we know, we know that it's not placebo effect all the time. It, it can be and it cannot be. Same with the oils. Like me, I need a lot of help in mindfulness when I'm angry. Joy doesn't work on me. My husband, I can put joy on him. He doesn't even know I put joy on him. And he's like laughing like a little girl. Like he's very funny when I put joy on him because he's just like, oh, how's it going? Oh, like he kind of jokes around with Jacob more. It's really funny. And he, it's there's no placebo effect because he doesn't even know what I put on him. <laughs> Okay. Um, so, and I have to mask that one. I have to put it on his feet with, and then put his socks, like he puts his socks on right in, away. So he doesn't even know what's going on. There is absolutely evidence for things working, not placebo effects. So I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is there's both. Depending on your ability to allow things to work or block things from working. Okay, so I want to be clear on that. I, I discussed this with my team at one point and somebody said, well, it's not all placebo effect. And I'm like, oh, that was a miss. Like I miss, I miss, it was a misunderstanding. And I want you to be very clear that there's just a really good placebo effect oftentimes. Not all the time. We know some of these just work. They just do. Um, and, and it's just a matter of you blocking that energy or not. Okay, so I want to get into how to get started, what to buy, where to buy it, all that good stuff, because there's confusion around this. And I don't want you to be confused. And there's a lot of fakes out there. Like don't go on Amazon to buy your crystals from China. They're probably gonna be fake. All right, so getting started with gemstones or crystals and minerals and stones and all that stuff can be like exceptionally overwhelming and so my advice to you is to find a good retailer, find a, a local store. There's often local stores around that you can buy from, but like up in Mammoth, there's a store I'm excited to go to. Um, we're, we're heading up there today and I'm gonna, you know, she just opened a couple weeks ago and I wanna go in and just say hello and see some of her stuff and see what she's got. Okay, probably the best place to buy. Uh, my girlfriend Maya was like, Etsy, Jen, just go on Etsy and kind of look through the stuff. I'm gonna teach you some how to spot fakes. There's a lot of fake sellers even on Etsy, but two shops in particular, um, I actually enjoy shopping with. So I wanna give you them. I'm gonna give you their information so that you can use them if you like. Um, they're based in California, but they ship worldwide. Um, a and S Crystals is excellent. So it's letter A and then the word and S Crystals. And that's just etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash the letter A the word and the letter S 
and then the word crystals. Um, a close second that I've had a lot of fun with um, lately is rockin', rocking pebbles. So it's just rocking pebbles, R-O-C-K-I-N-G-P-E-B-B-L-E-S. They have a lot of really good um, rolled stones. They even have like a little set that you can buy. Okay, I'm actually working with them to see if they can create a, a set that I think would make sense for you guys. And again, I don't make any money off of this, okay? So this is just trying to help you all out. All right, so an easy place to start because this is available are seven, seven stone chakra sets. Now, again, we're gonna get into the chakras in another time because that is a huge topic that um, is very misunderstood but um, and very diverse and interesting. So we're gonna get into that in a completely different set uh, series. So, but what I would say is get yourself a sel selenite bar or a bowl and selenite typically is like um, satin spar, but that's a, a bowl that, you know, or, or bar that you can kind of help clear your, your, your stones and stuff. We're gonna get into what that means. Um, I would look at getting like clear quartz, maybe white howlite. White howlite is really good for um, like anxiety and stress and like sleeping. It's a beautiful stone. Rose quartz, amethyst, those are typical. Um, lapis lazuli is is like, I'm, I love that one. That's a really big biblical one that we'll, we'll get into in the other talk. Um, blue, la blue lace agate is a good one. Malachite, um, really beautiful green, right? Uh, green aventurine, that's a typical one that comes in sets. Um, jade, which is really pretty and fun. Uh, citrine, tiger's eye is common. Uh, carnelian, golden quartz, red jasper, onyx, black obsidian, black tourmaline. Tourmaline. tourmaline, tourmaline. <laughs> okay, so those are some, that's like 18, technically, 17 with the selenite bar. But um, I have a website that I'm creating for you guys on Vitality EDU. I have a, a, it's not finished yet, but those of you guys who are like, I wanna go and like see everything right now, um, you, it's free. So just go to vitalityedu.com forward slash crystals. I'm still adding content. But, but if you were like, I don't know where to start, what I would tell you to do is go on to one of these Etsy retailers, type in the name of the crystals I just told you, the stones that I just told you, one at a time and look at it. Does it look cool to you? Do you think that would be a fun stone for you? Does it, you know, what are, what are you drawn to? Like Gary used to always say, go to your oils and just, what are you drawn to? Use your gut instinct. Then open the description. And I, I love these retailers because they put a really clear description of what it's typically used for. Um, and that's going to help you with all of that. Now these, you know, I could give you a top and I, I've, I've broken it down to kind of some other things as we move forward, but that will be again another discussion because we, again, we can go on forever. Um, but I want to also help you understand um, how to spot some fakes and what to look for. Number one, if you see a retailer saying something like strawberry turquoise, something with like a food name in front of it, it's usually fake, okay? Um, if you look at turquoise in, in particular, 90% of all turquoise on the market is fake. And I, you know, I don't even have any turquoise. I'm not like a huge fan of turquoise. Some of you love turquoise and it's like your favorite. But oftentimes turquoise is, um, they, they will, you know, it, it might be howlite, right? Or um, like, so howlite is this white stone that has the same kind of like black, like ribbing almost as turquoise does. So they take the white howlite and they dye it turquoise. So an easy way to tell if it's not turquoise is does the black parts look a little turquoise, right? Because then the, the dye would be there too. Um, so that's a telltale sign. But also fake turquoise, um, this is kind of interesting. Real turquoise should fluoresce. Uh, so take a black light to it when it's dark, like dark, no lights, take a black light there's little specks in there that should like light up like fluoresce real turquoise whereas fake turquoise won't um the other thing that you can do is you can take a a needle under some flame get it real hot and then stick the tip onto the turquoise now the turquoise real turquoise should burn fake turquoise will melt if, it, if it's plastic if it's made out of the howlite just take some acetone and try and try and you know, if you took acetone to real turquoise, it wouldn't do anything to it. If you took acetone to, um, to how, you know, fake dyed howlite, the, the 
dye would come off. So um, there's other things with quartz. So quartz is a common one where you're gonna see glass. It's just glass and you're gonna see tiny air bubbles in the stone. So real quartz, you know, should have like this kind of opaqueness to it with weird coloring and variations. And, um, you know, I showed you, here's two worry stones. They have different variations and little cracks and stuff. Also cracks, cracks are common when you see a crack in it. If it's dyed, there'll be a lot of extra color dye kind of soaking into the crack area. So that's another telltale sign. Um, but look for little air bubbles and stuff in there. Amethyst is also an another one that's often faked. So like I have this cool amethyst bracelet and they're all different colors and, and that's correct. You want it to be, all, you know, fake amethyst is like really bright. So oftentimes you'll get amethyst that you think, oh, it's kind of like light colored, but it's um, because amethyst has this kind of really cool shades of purple. So when you see something really bright purple and like kind of consistent in color, um, it's usually a fake. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Um, but just get to know your retailers, ask questions, go on to Etsy and just start having conversations with them. They're, they really do like helping. So that's, I think what's really fun about it. Okay. Moving forward, I'm going to get into the whole concept and idea of cleansing and preparing and recharging and setting intentions. And what does that look like? <laughs> okay. Um, because these kind of focus energy, um, you know, there can be some, kind of latent, weird, funky energy in them that is from wherever they were shipped from. So think think that through. I mean, it's kind of weird. If I think about um, animals, and we've talked about this before, and this is a super dicey subject, but like slaughtered animals are have the fear hormone coursing through their bodies. You don't want to eat that, <laughs> okay? So that's um, similar. Like when you think about whoever made this bracelet, I don't know, maybe she was having like a really bad day or she was screaming at her husband or fighting with somebody. I don't know. So I don't know. I don't understand it fully, but I understand the concept behind it. And I'm not interested in that kind of like energy. And some of you guys can really feel energy and you can get something and be like, this doesn't feel good to me. So because these are just natural stones, fakes, you cannot clear and cannot cleanse because they're fake and dead. <laughs> But these, and again, these are technically dead, but can carry latent energy. And again, that's where some of you will disagree with me, but it's stone is a stone. So water cleansing is a typical way to do this. So you just run this under water, better to use natural water sources like a lake or an ocean, really good. Salt water is really good. Um, but just run it under some tap water if that's all you have. Um, we have aligned water here. We align our water. So I run it through tap water and then I sit it in a, in, a, in, a, in a bowl of aligned water and that just clears it out, right? This is super, super, super um, specific water, okay? Again, you can do whichever. Salt water, you can put a, some salt, you know, like pink Himalayan salt or whatever into um, like about a tablespoon into a cup of water, make sure the items are fully submerged. So those are a couple of ways. Another thing is sun um, cleansing or clearing, which is you just lay it out in the sun. So you can do for like, I don't know, as much as you want, but really um, a lot of people will say three hours. Some people say 10 hours, 12 hours. So you can just set these things out in the sun. Now, if it's bright sun, this could magnify the light and burn something. So make sure this isn't like pointing at something that is going to light up in flames. Okay, so be, be aware of that. Um, just check on them every once in a while as the sun changes, but that's another way. Um, earth clearing is where you could take all of your things and bury them in the earth for a couple days. Like I, I know people who do that and then they lose them and they're like, where did I put them? So mark where you put them. Um, again, it's just this there's energy in our soil. And some of you know this, like I'm a gardener and I love, like I'm gardening all day this weekend. I was like totally out there with my gloves on because we were dealing with a lot of thorns and stuff and pulling down vines. And, and I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I need to take my gloves off. I could feel it. Like I need to take my gloves off and start. And I got so much dirt and I have the worst fingers. You guys, I straight up have like terrible nails because I play the piano and it's like, I need to have like no fingernails. But I mean, it's just like, they were black. I had so much soil on my hands and, and it felt good. So some of you know that like, just sometimes getting in the earth for you is a necessary, like if you're inside all day. You just need to go take a walk outside. That's clearing your own body. Like take a walk 
breathe the fresh air. You need to go outside and take your shoes off and walk around the grass, right? It's like, get your feet in the dirt. That's something that a lot of people have done and you were like, whoa, that feels so much better. There's a connectivity to us humans and earth and these stones. So burying them in the earth might sound weird, but there's some interesting stuff behind that. Okay, sometimes you get something and it's kind of like, you 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 were really drawn to and it felt really good and it you just felt good about it and then all of a sudden you feel like i don't know what's wrong but i don't feel like good about that one anymore there's something funky about it it could be you so check you check that you have recharged yourself that you're not super stressed out that you can go and like sit in the sun for a minute, breathe in through your nostrils as deep as you can and feel your belly rise and fall right there's some things like that but a lot of times it's just your stones need to be kind of recharged. So this is an interesting thing um, where <clears throat> it's the moon. So the, the sunlight helps recharge your stone, but sometimes it needs like a full moon. So again, this is a part of it that I'm sort of like, hmm, but we know that the tides are totally dictated by the moon cycles. I don't understand it. Science has totally studied that. So God has put the moon so precisely in our orbit, you know, in, in our sphere of influence with the sun that it looks the same as the sun. At any, you know, it's just like so wild, the whole precision of it all. So I'm not going to like put it past somebody and say, oh, that sounds weird. You know, the light of a full moon, whatever. So, you know, I think the full moon this month is the 27th or something like that. You could get some and just lay them out during the full moon. Just, just something that will recharge your crystals. And I know some people um, do this once a month. So meaning like you, you kind of run your crystals underwater once a month or your rocks, stuff like that. So it's an important thing to consider. So I'm going to briefly touch on um, chakras. And then we're going to, like I said, do a lot more about that later. But um, chakras are kind of the potentially new age and i talk about the occult practice and what does that look like but really that wasn't introduced until the 70s very recently if you think about timelines um when we think about going back in time to when all of this started the energy centers the wheels if you will was really tantric yoga back in like from 600 to 1300 and that was like a long time ago like we're talking about ce time period right so and it's not seven chakras you know people will say it's like six plus one right um and that these are these like energy centers that we're, we supposedly have well there's a whole lot of misinformation on this that i'm going to help you unpack but there's really closer to 12 or 16 energy centers um based on tantric yoga not based on the newer practices when we get into learning about the chakras as as like Carl Jung kind of put some associations to them um, like Anadia Judith there's that's a big person that a lot of people follow and she wrote wheels of life and she put a lot of associations on crystals or on chakras excuse me um, such as crystals that weren't really in the original Sanskrit sources so the Indian Sanskrit sources. So um, just so you know, this has evolved over time and it's okay. Things have, you know, things work, things do well. That's why you don't see any specific, like you see kind of some variations of stones for different chakras. Um, one of you asked a, a pretty fun question <clears throat> about the, the seven, the, the, like the, the, the seven chakra um, stones. So I want to, um, I, gosh, I can't even remember your name, but I'm going to look it up and you're, you're the winner for this one because the seven stone, um, crystal is like so pretty and it's not really a chakra stone. It can kind of go anywhere. It's like an all over thing. And it's a stone that has seven different minerals basically intertwined. And I'll tell you right now, it's one of the prettiest stones I've ever seen. It's expensive, but it's really, really pretty. Um, and it's said to help like dissipate funky energy like well like detox things really well as well so so as we get into this um i want to share with you how the, the bad the bad of it the toxic of it okay so this is the ending of this and then we're going to get over into the other group so i want you to know um i've researched 
a very long list of stones and minerals that are considered toxic when you're pounding them and working on them for for people who are jewelers. Um, and that's not super comprehensive. It's kind of like, well, this has asbestos in it. So if you're pounding it or whatever, be real careful, make sure you wash your hands. But when we look at other lists, when we look at specific lists that talk about toxicity in stones, the thing I need you to remember is that essential oils are metal sucking. They want to they want to clean metal out. They're key, natural chelators, right? So that's they want to clean metal out of your body. They want to clean metal out of whatever. So it's why we don't recommend like aluminum for instance is one of the most the, the one of the most it's like earth's most abundant resource is aluminum it's in everything so it makes sense that aluminum is kind of contaminating a bunch of our minerals it, it just is it's not a big deal though if i think that through aluminum's everywhere it's if i'm ingesting large quantities of aluminum so i don't know that you're really going to be doing that but there's this thing that people do which is called they, they create elixirs so i'm just Let's just show you what that means. I might take a stone and drop it in. Okay. They'll create these elixirs. There's all sorts of ways to do this. You can, um, you know, put them in the water, let them sit for a while, drink it, uh, spray it, whatever. The, the fad has gotten to where people are putting crystals into roller bottles and then putting their oils in there. It's basically, you're creating like a, a crystal tincture, if you will. Okay, so why is this problematic? Well, I'm not, I don't want you putting any crystals in there that contain aluminum, and a lot of them do. <clears throat> or I don't want you putting anything in there that contains iron or asbestos or any number of things. I mean, there's copper, lead, mercury, nickel, um, sulfur, you know, arsenic like do you want that in your oils and then rubbing it on your body no <laughs> like no so what was cool was as i was doing research i got um in with ali phillips who she's done a lot of work on just helping you understand oil you know crystals and oils and your pets and you know for instance a lot of crystals and stones are too soft so they would just disintegrate in your oil so you don't want to do that but um but she's created a really just simple list of stones that work totally fine with your oils so that's like i put amethyst into my ninja red drink totally fine whatever right um and same with quartz so any of these quartz is, they're all different colors. You can find different colors of quartz. Um, she also puts agate on there. Like there's agate, there's a bunch. So this is considered an agate, right? It's, there's several things in one. Agates, though, I would caution you on to make sure what is in that agate. But um, aventurine is a question mark because in some of my research, I've found that it has aluminum. But remember, I'm not so concerned with small amounts of aluminum in a stone. And avertine is like a pretty common stone that, shouldn't have aluminum in it. Um, I have one source that says that it does, but again, it's it, probably not enough to bother you. So um, bloodstone, carnelian, which is really pretty. It's like orange, orange stone, right? Um, carnelian, uh, citrine, diamond, jasper, peridot, um, and again, like we said, all the quartzes. So, you know, people like diamond, yes like your diamond rings, like if you're wearing a diamond necklace, it's totally fine. And, and you know, we think about um, the healing arts of, of crystals and why is diamond never mentioned? <laughs> because it's expensive, you know, and practitioners aren't going to pull out their big old stone diamond that's worth $80 million, right? But, but that's a really beautiful magnifying stone. So if you have a, a diamond ring that you just wear every once in a while that's larger, or maybe you wear it all the time. You can use that as well. So we want to um, we want to just be aware that it's a small list of, of of stones that are technically okay for you to be using with your oils. And that you know, I mean, it begs the question. Well, what about like a jade roller? Jade is not on that list. It contains aluminum and iron. And you know what? 
People have those jade rollers. Okay. What I'm saying is, so I want to back up and be very clear. We're going to put the stones not soaking in oils. We're going to, if I put oils and I'm using this, I might use it. I might use it if I'm, you know, rubbing my face. I don't know, right? I don't know. Again, because of the roller. I don't have a jade roller. I have a um, quartz roller, which is perfectly fine. But if you're going to put a bunch of oils on your face and then use a jade roller, not the end of the world. Just wash the jade roller off really well after you use it with the oils. And, you know, it's you're probably fine. You're not consuming it, right? It's if you were going to take jade and have the little crystals in a roller ball well it's it's the oils will eventually suck you, you guys can do this as a test take a water bottle right so here's an empty water bottle take a water bottle fill it halfway put a drop of i don't know whatever lemon essential oil peppermint it really doesn't matter put whatever you want in there wait a week come back and tell me what you see it will leach the plastic okay it does the same thing with metal just slower not stainless steel we know there are certain metals that are like harder but aluminum It'll pull. So we just want to be careful about that. We want to be clear about that. I wanted to help you um, understand that. Now, when it comes to pairings, again, some people will teach you colors are important. I disagree with that. Meaning like, you know, if you're using a purple stone like amethyst, use like valor. It actually doesn't matter. I, you know, I can sit like the other day I was, um, I was at the I was at the um at a restaurant and we were like freaking out because it was like an hour. We're like sitting there for an hour and we had ordered our food and my son was like kind of melting down and our dog was at home, um, yeah, totally past his food time now at this point. And I had uh, my sacred sandalwood in my purse and I had this stone and I put some sacred sandalwood on here and I just was rubbing it and I kind of gave it to my son and I'm like just hang just play with it because it's kind of fun to feel these little worry stones. And um, it just smelled so good. And I think, is it this one or this one? I have two of these. It was the bigger one. It's gone now, the smell, but this was two nights ago. And it was just so like calming. The oil smell, because we love sandalwood. And it's a stone I know is totally fine to put an oil on, <laughs> okay? And just rub. And it was, a, it was a fun, cool experience, like for the whole family. Like it just, we just sat there and it was nice. So. Just know it's not like there's something that you must do. Like you must pair these with this. Now, I will give you though some, some lists of like, I gave you those 17 stones that I think would be a good starting point. Um, I'm going to highlight the 17, I'm gonna highlight like five or six of them so that you know which one should I, maybe seven, cause some of you guys wanna know kind of like, where would I tell you to start with chakra stones if you wanted to go there? Um, and I can explain to you, cause again, we're gonna do a whole nother series on chakras, but um, I will tell you for sure, just go and find an oil that resonates with you and then use that stone. What's going to happen is there's a magnification, like a marrying of this frequency that will happen. And, um, and yeah, there's a resonance thing that can happen and there's some frequency shifts that can happen. But ultimately speaking, you're looking at, um, like I might knowing that a stone and look at them. If this stone, like, if you're, how many of you guys are here because you want something that helps calm you down? I mean, I think that's the majority of you. I think the majority of people using stones right now, meaning getting into it for the first time, is because they just need a break from the crazy that's happening in this world. And so when you sit there and you pull something and you're like, I just think this is really pretty and I don't know why. Like I have a, a peach stone here. And I, I, I bought it because I really like the color. I have no clue what it does. I think it's peach quartz. I don't know. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I know it's a real stone because it's see-through and I can see all of the stuff in it. But it's a cool color. And I'm going to end with this because this is going to segue into our crossover event. So get over into uh, Roots and Fruits. Again, we won't let you in unless you answer the questions, so make sure you answer the questions. Um, but the crossover event is for faith-based people. So if you want to understand from a Christian standpoint, like God created these. He created all of these. Man didn't create these. This is God's handiwork and it's gorgeous. Like if anything, 
it doesn't matter because I can look at the stone and be like, this is so pretty. And how, what, I mean, what an artist our God is. Like what an artist. And I think about that and I think I can look at this and glorify God alone, not the stone. I can't sit there and go, I can't, I won't do it. I won't tell you guys to do it. I went, oh, you're so pretty little stone. This is not a human. <laughs> okay. This could be a murder weapon. This thing is sharp. How they, whoever, you know, filed this down. But man, oh man, the, the handiwork of God's work in this agate is brilliant. And I can honor God through this. And when I've sat for half, 20 minutes to a half hour at a time doing chakra work, laying in the sun yesterday, I got burnt, like my whole nose got burnt. And I'm like, oops, you know, doing, um, stuff in my room I've done it here just laying it's been such a such a beautiful connection time with God I don't empty my mind and think of nothing I don't think about some sort of weird random energy flowing through my head and clearing the chakras no I pull God into the entire process so when we talk about chakras we're going to have a crossover event in there as well so that I can help my my faith-based friends in here my Christian friends in here understand a really clear way that these can get you closer to God, not the stones, okay? It's not about the stones. It's about really your prayer life, giving glory to God, understanding what the Holy Spirit's work is in your life, okay? So I can't wait to share with you the second series on this. So head over to rootsandfruits.com. Excuse me, that's totally wrong. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash roots fruits, or just type in roots and fruits, answer the questions or you won't get let in. We're going to start in probably about 15 minutes. Um, this will be loaded onto YouTube as well. So I hope that this has been helpful to you and maybe eye opening. I, the next one will be super eye opening because that's where I'm going to get on a little bit of a platform. <laughs> Okay, but I'm going to help you guys understand this as loving as I can, because I think that's the confusion is sort of the, oh, no, like, is Jen now telling us to do something that's going to cause me to go to hell? I, I, and I, I promise you, that's a real concern. Um, and I want to help you understand um, the slippery slope and where to go and what not to do and what to do and what things I definitely disagree with in this, what I feel are absolutely against God's word and the things that you should definitely stay away from, but the stuff that you can do without feeling bad. And I also don't want to get into a situation where I'm causing a weaker Christian to stumble. So I'm going to help you understand that as well. All right. Thanks, you guys. This has been super fun. We'll see you over at Roots and Fruits. Bye, guys.